In this video, I'm going to be explaining how Hashimoto's affects female fertility and what one of the most important tests is that you must get if you have fertility problems. So Hashimoto's is an autoimmune thyroid condition, and research has known for quite a while that Hashimoto's definitely affects female fertility. Uh, some research has shown that it affects, uh, increases risk of miscarriage, uh, causes other kind of birth complications. But no one has really known kind of how it does that. And a paper came out recently, and I'll give you the link for it, that really explored how does Hashimoto's affect female fertility. And I want to skip over a lot of the science so the video is not 20 minutes long. Uh, but basically, they did what's called a meta metabolomic, metabolomic uh, analysis of follicular fluid and serum fluid from Hashimoto's patients. So follicles, follicular fluid, those are in the ovaries, right? And those are what mature uh, and produce eggs, and then, you know, you can get pregnant. Uh, in Hashimoto's patients, so here's what they found. Uh, very important findings. In Hashimoto's patients, antithyroglobulin antibodies were 10 times higher both in their blood and in the follicle fluid than in people that didn't have Hashimoto's. So what does that mean? Well, in Hashimoto's, uh, it's an autoimmune condition, and you make antibodies. I always tell people that antibodies are like, you know, little post-it notes that your immune system makes to stick onto something. And in Hashimoto's, the two antibodies that you can make are thyroid peroxidase antibodies or thyroglobulin antibodies. And what's interesting about this is for the last 10 or 15 years, a lot of doctors, a lot of endocrinologists, a lot of insurance companies don't want to pay for thyroglobulin antibodies because the kind of prevailing wisdom has been that, it, you know, TPO antibodies, thyroid peroxidase antibodies, are the better antibodies. But here's what this study found. This study found that you could have normal TSH, uh, normal T4, no thyroid peroxidase antibodies, but have thyroglobulin antibodies. So this is kind of turning that model on its end. Now, me personally, for the last 20 years, I've always checked both because there's no rule that says you can only have one. And this study, I, I'm really glad that it was uh, done. Someone finally looked at it. Uh, it just kind of supports the idea that you really should be doing all the correct testing. So if you have a fertility problem, number one, you need to be getting checked for Hashimoto's. Uh, and if you haven't been, you got to get checked correctly. And the correct way would be to do both of those antibodies, both thyroid peroxidase antibodies and thyroglobulin antibodies. But just got to remember, you may walk in and talk to a doctor or some kind of practitioner that only wants to do the TPO, the thyroid peroxidase antibodies. Don't settle for that. Make sure you're working with someone that's going to do both. Okay. Now, with that said, uh, the levels of these antibodies are 10 times higher than people without Hashimoto's. But it's not just in your blood, it's also in the follicular fluid in your ovaries. And the scientists still aren't quite sure exactly what the connection is, but they know that it's related to altered metabolism uh, of certain pathways. And I'll just tell you what they are, but we're not going to go into them. Um, there's the linoleic uh, pathway, the sphingolipid uh, pathway, uh, alpha-linolenic pathway, uh, the glycerophospholipid pathway, and those are pathways that we all they know affect uh, ovarian function, but exactly how the thyroglobulin antibodies are messing with those, they don't know. But we know that fertility is probably uh, fertility is negatively affected by having Hashimoto's, and one of the ways it's doing that is through thyroglobulin antibodies. And really, the takeaway from today is I want you to make sure you're getting the correct test. So again, let me review that. If you have a fertility problem, right, number one, make sure you check your male partner. Uh, but if the, the fertility issue seems to be, you know, a female fertility problem, the first thing you got to get checked for is not just hypothyroidism, but uh, Hashimoto's. Because just a quick word, and I'll put a video up here that kind of goes over this. I'll, I'll link to it. You know, there's different types of Hashimoto's. There's a kind of a spectrum. There's euthyroid Hashimoto's where you just have the antibodies. There's subclinical Hashimoto's where you have the antibodies and your TSH is high. And then there's overt hypothyroidism where your TSH is high, the T4, T3 is low, and you have the antibodies. What this paper is very clear about saying is you can have euthyroid Hashimoto's with thyroglobulin antibodies and it can affect uh, your fertility. You don't have to have overt hypothyroidism. You don't have to have just the thyroid peroxidase antibodies. So this is really, really important. Uh, so please make sure you're working with someone that understands all that testing. But then also, make sure you're working with someone that knows what do we do about the antibodies, right? Because there are things you can do, but you got to be working with someone that knows what those are. Uh, there are things you can do to regulate the immune system and lower thyroid antibodies level, 
uh, thyroid antibody levels. Uh, so you've got to make sure you're working with someone that knows that stuff, right? So that's what I wanted to share with you about how Hashimoto's affects uh, female fertility. Make sure you get the right test, uh, and I'll see you next time.